Good morning. Hi, Vanessa. Hi, Pamela. Hi, Walter. Good morning. Thank you, Jesus. Woo! I feel the presence of God. Hi, Kelly. Hi, Mika. Hi, Lisa. Hi, Overflow Vita. Hi, Tracy. Woo! Mm mm mm. I'm going to wait just a minute. I don't usually wait too long. So um, we'll wait about 30 more seconds. Good morning. Good morning. God is so good. He's so good. Hi, Jack. Hi, Marche. Hey, Nika. That's my sister. Hi, Kimberly. Hey, Jamaica man. I'm going to try to get through this live, y'all, without crying. I am just so grateful. I'm so grateful today. I'm grateful every day. But oh, I am so grateful for Jesus. I'm grateful. Oh, give me just a second. Okay. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I just thank the Lord this morning, you all. I wanted to come on anytime I get a chance to. I like to encourage people especially young people, to give your life to the Lord. Give your life to the Lord. Give your life to the Lord. <clears throat> give your life to the Lord. <clears throat> oh, <clears throat> I'm going to pull it together, y'all. I promise. My heart is just full of gratitude on today. <clears throat> and ever since I gave the Lord my life, I've been full of gratitude, but it's when you truly look back, some, some days I sit here and I say, God, you have brought me from a place of bondage. You have truly set my life free. I used to be so in bondage with sin. Y'all don't understand my mind the things I used to do, the things I used to watch and the way the Lord works, you really don't realize sometimes when you're being delivered, if that makes sense. Um, it's just like the Lord, the way he moves, it's just one day you just don't desire something no more. You don't. And you're like, wow, it's just spending that time with him, spending that time with him in his presence. <laughs> God is so good, y'all. Anybody who know me, my sister that's on here. One day, we was she had a little dinner at her house. I don't know if she's still on here. I've been knowing her all my life since I was nine years old. But I was in my early 20s, y'all. And I used to drink alcohol until I just could barely see. And um, I was driving that night, and I had to take her home. <laughs> And it broke my heart because I scared her. I was driving literally in the middle of the road. It was nothing but the grace of God that I got her home safe and I made it back to the house safe. So when I tell you I'm grateful for God today and I'm grateful for what Jesus has done for me, it's not a game for me because I know where he's brought me from. Because that wasn't the first time or the last time that I drove under the influence of alcohol so much, y'all, that I don't even remember driving. Yeah, I don't understand. 
You sometimes you just and we're not going to understand a person's praise. We're not going to understand why they live the way they live for God. But you don't know where God has brought a person from. You don't know where God has brought me from. I used to wake up and look outside to see if my car was there because I didn't even remember driving home. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. So you can't tell me God didn't have a plan for my life. You can't tell me that God is not real. You can't tell me that angels aren't real and that he wasn't ooh, looking out for me. You all don't know where God has brought me from. Laying down with strange men because I didn't have no respect for my life, for myself. I had no respect for me, no self-love. I didn't even know my worth. I didn't even know my worth. I didn't think anybody loved me. And it started with my mom not wanting me. And I love her. It's, it's not even like that. I don't want you all to think my mother is a bad person. Because even though I don't know her personally, I know that she's not just this horrible person. Mm -hmm. I know that she loves me. But she just didn't know how. She just didn't know how to give me her time and her, her love at that time. But she's still alive. So there's still hope. I still have hope. But what I want to tell you, y'all, is God is faithful. God is faithful. He is faithful. We are not here on accident. We're not here on accident. You are not on this live by accident. You're not just walking and talking and, and breathing for nothing. You're not here for nothing. You're not here for nothing. <laughs> And if we can just get it that God never created us to walk around in sin. He never created that. He never created. And if you really look at it, sin does nothing but destroy us. Sin does nothing but destroy us. And it has this perception or this, this deceived look like it's fun and it's exciting, but it leads only to death. And then possibly a second death if we don't give our life to the Lord. Y'all, my heart, I am so just full of just gratefulness. That's why if God don't do nothing else for me, y'all, I could leave here today. And I'm telling you, I am so grateful. And I have the assurance that I am going to be with my father. We going to be with him again, y'all. If you are saved, you are going to another place. This is not your home. Life does not end here. This is not the end. It's not the end. And I cannot, I can't, we, we can't make people believe that. I know some people have their things, but if you, if you just get into relationship with him, if you just get into relationship with him, you will see, you will see. I have so many stories and I can go on and on and on, but I'm telling you all, God took my life that was broken. It started with my mom, not wanting me. I had to move from house to house, relative to relative. I literally remember having my clothes in trash bags. I had things happen to me coming up. I was molested. I didn't even say anything. I have been raped numerous of times, just in different situations. I mean, <laughs> I grew up feeling so unloved and so unwanted. It was ridiculous. It's no wonder. But what I'm trying to tell you is, God will change your life. He will heal you from all of that. I don't care what you've been through. I don't care what you've done because really none of us are perfect. Just because all of that stuff happened to me don't mean I didn't do stuff because I was jacked up too. So I, it goes both ways. And that's why we have to be forgiving, forgiving because we don't know what we've done to other people either. Some of us have done stuff and we don't even know we've done it. Some of us have done stuff and we don't even know we've done it, but we have enough nerve to hold a grudge against somebody else. And God being all loving uh, still forgives us if we truly ask for forgiveness and forgive other people. <laughs> Y'all, I'm telling you, I didn't do did so much stuff. I, sometimes it's a wonder I'm still here. It's a wonder. I didn't experiment with all kind of drugs, doing stuff. My heart be beating so fast. I thought I was going to pass out and die. I'm telling you, I didn't did some of everything trying to escape, trying to escape. I know why I was drinking. I know why I was getting high. 
because I was trying to escape mm -hmm. the pain. It hurt it. It hurt so bad. I was full of so much pain, y'all. And I was trying to escape every day, every day. I was trying to just get out of this pain. I don't want to feel this. I don't want to feel this rejection. I don't want to feel it. I don't even want to feel it. And that's why a lot of us medicate. We self-medicate. We don't want to think about what happened to us when we was a kid. We don't mm -hmm. want to think about our uncle that used to rape us. We don't want to think about our drunk father that used to beat us. We don't want to think about all of this stuff. So we we feel our, we, we medicate, we self-medicate, self-medicate. <laughs> Jesus is the only thing that is going to help us. Now, there are some things that are out there that will give the illusion like it's the answer, but it's only temporary, baby. I'm telling you, if you want to permanently be healed from the things of your past, from the wounds of your soul, if you want a permanent, a permanent solution, then he is the only permanent solution. He's the only permanent solution. And I'm telling you what I know. I have been through it. And on top of that, I made a lot of dumb choices, a lot of bad decisions, a lot of bad decisions. And I can't go back and change that. But what I can do once I gave the Lord my life, he takes away the guilt. He takes away the shame. Ain't nothing nobody could do about the past, baby. But you can do about something about what's going on right now and what you're going to do moving forward. That's what you can do something about. Don't even think about the past. Don't even think about it because ain't nothing you could do about it. It ain't nothing. You cannot go back in time. God is the only one who can go back in time. <laughs> so don't even worry about it. And I'm telling you. <laughs> If God will forgive me for the abortions, for the divorces, for the, the uh, whooping my children when I was upset, all kind of stuff. I did all kind of stuff, okay? Because I ain't, look, I ain't ashamed no more because Jesus is the only one that delivered me. So I can tell you wholeheartedly and wholeheartedly and honestly that he is the one that set me free. He is the one. He is the one. Don't let nobody tell you nothing different. Don't let nobody lie to you. Don't let nobody lie to you. I'm telling you now because it's a lot of lies out there. There is one way to heaven. One. But the main thing I wanted to share is that I want to encourage you just to give your life to him. There is nothing going on on this. I'm sorry, y'all. From When I was crying, my nose is running. There is nothing going on in this earth. That is worth you missing heaven for. There is nothing going on on this earth. That is worth you missing your relationship with the father for. There is a relationship that you can have in your life. And some of you do. Every day. It's a, it's a daily thing. It does not end. It does not start on Sunday morning. And end on Sunday evening. It's not like that. It's a relationship. Just like with your spouse. You talk to them. You spend time with them. You love them. You want to be around them. It's like that. No, we cannot physically see God, but he's there. And I am a witness. He is answering prayers. I don't care. He answering prayers. So obviously he hears us. He wants to talk to you. He wants you to spend time with him. He doesn't want to be just there when you want something. He going to give you that. It ain't nothing too hard for God. And he wants to give us things. It's not that he don't want to do it. He wants to. But I would be very angry. And I have been treated like this. If my children only came to me when they wanted something. If they never talked to me. If they came into the house and never said a word to me. Until they needed something that would break my heart. And I'm sure it will break your heart if your child did you that way. And some people do us like that. Some people only text you or pick up the phone if they need you. If they need something. Other than that, they don't never say, hey, how you doing? Just calling to check on you. Are you okay? Can I do something for you today? I'm telling you what I know. God wants us to love him for real. Because y'all, the stuff that's on this earth... It's going to burn up one day. It ain't even, we can't take nothing with us. If we die today, guess what? Our clothes, shoes, jewelry, houses, cars, cl all this stuff going to be left behind. All of it will be left behind. So why do we put it in front of God? 
Or why do we make it a priority to ask him for this stuff? When the Bible tells us, if you just seek me, seek me and my righteousness, I'll give you everything you need and then some. God don't stop at the minimal. He going to give you the overflow. But some of us just, God, God, I need this. I need that. I need this. I want this house. I want this car. I want this husband. What about him? What about him? We have to fall in love with him all over again. And every day I make it my business to spend time with the father. Every day. Sometimes it has to be early in the morning before anybody gets up. I come sit down and I say, here I am, God. Here I am. What can I do for you today? Yeah. When we give our life to him, it's really about him. Even though we really do what we want to do and then try to bring him into it. When it should be, what can I do for you? What do you want me to do today? And wait for him. <laughs> Y'all, I have no regrets. Of all the sins I have committed, and I probably didn't commit them all. I'm telling you out of the horse's mouth, I have not one regret. I don't miss it. I don't miss it. My only regret is I wish, I wish I could have just said yes sooner. I wish, I wish. Mm -hmm. That's the only thing. I wish I don't miss nothing. Because God opens your eyes. You can see the schemes of the enemy. You can see what sin really is all about. Drinking is fun, but it's killing you. Smoking is fun, but it's either killing you or it's altering your mind. I don't want to be altered. When you get when you have Jesus in your life, you don't want nothing to alter your nothing. You don't want to be mind altered. That's how you know you really got them because you don't want nothing to take you off. You don't want nothing to take you away from the way you feel. You don't need nothing and you sure don't want nothing to take away how you feel. You want to feel this good all the time, all the time, because the, the, the way God make you feel, the way the relationship you have with him, the way his love make you feel, you don't want nothing else. You don't want nothing else because nothing tops it. I didn't had everything. I didn't tried everything. I promise you, except for this new drugs y'all got out here. I don't know about this new stuff. But I didn't try a whole lot of stuff. It ain't nothing. Ain't nothing top the love of God. Nothing. Nothing. Don't nothing top how his spirit make you feel. No sex. No drugs. No alcohol. I'm telling you what I know. And the thing about it. <laughs> the creator is the only one that can make you feel the most euphoria ever. Because he's your creator. None of this man-made stuff going to ever top the creator. <laughs> the creator. <laughs> so I just want to encourage you all today. Don't just say, don't just speak about it. Let's be about it. Because when you be about it, your life going to show. It's going to show. The Bible talks about that. That's why ain't no point of talking about folks or trying to figure out they save or not. For one, that's not our job. That is not our job. It is not my job to walk around to my sheen say, look at her. That's not my job. But it is my job to pray. I see some of my brothers and sisters falling off, falling off. You know what I do? I pray for them because I don't want them to go to hell. And I don't want them to miss the life God has for them. I want each of you to experience the fullness of life. Why wouldn't I? Why wouldn't I? Why would I not want you to experience the fullness of life? Mm -hmm. Even if you mistreat me, I still can. I just can't. And it's only Jesus. I promise you, because it used to be a time I could not pray for my enemies, be it, my enemies. It used to be a time I did want something bad to happen to people. If they did me wrong, I'd be like, oh, God, get them. But I'm not like that anymore because it's Jesus. He's changing me. He's showing me that. No, no, no. I'm telling you, the wrath of God, you don't want nobody. When you get to know God, you ain't going to want nobody. And read about his wrath in the Bible. Why would you want anybody to experience that? That is awful. You need to pray for them jokers because the, the Bible say, God said, vengeance is mine. 
I will repay. So be careful the things you want to happen to people. We got to be careful. We need to be praying for people, not talking evil about them or not wishing something bad upon them. Y'all, this is a for real, real thing. This is not a game. This is not a hobby. It's not a joke. And one day we all going to see those that have gone on before us. They, they experiencing something. And there's no, there's, you're not going to lose out on anything by believing in Jesus. That's something I never understood. Jesus ain't never hurt nobody. It ain't never hurt nobody to believe in Jesus. It never hurt nobody. If anything, it's only uh, benefited you. It ain't never mm -hmm. hurt nobody. I ain't never heard of it hurt nobody. Have you? But so many are against it. So many are against it. That's how you know. <laughs> That's how you know. Y'all be encouraged today. There is a life God has for you. And, you know, sometimes we think, oh, I got this mm -hmm. dude or I want to go have this sex. I'm telling you, I have been celibate a long time. God will give you the strength. He will help you. If you want to be celibate, he will help you be celibate. He will help you. If you want to do right, God will help you do right. He will help you. And you're not going to miss it. You're not going to miss it. I'm telling you, you're not going to miss it. <laughs> the enemy, I hate, I hate Satan because he just tricks people all the time. He is tricking so many of our people. And then we sit here and we make these mm -hmm. poses and people mm -hmm. dying. Too many of us are dying prematurely. They, a lot of young people and babies and stuff, they're not supposed to be dead. This suicide spirit, these people are not supposed to be dying. <sighs> Jesus, we got to pray. We have pray for your family. Pray you may be the only saved person in your family. You need to be praying for them like never before. You need to be praying for them like never before. Pray for your children. I pray for my grandchildren. Because I'm telling you, y'all, Satan is busy. You better cover your family. If they can't cover themselves, you cover them. You cover them in prayer because the prayers of the righteous availeth much. The prayers of the righteous availeth much. The prayers of the righteous availeth much. Pray for your people. Pray. Pray for your children. God has even taken me from a place of, of being a fusser to a prayer. There's a lot of stuff I don't even say no more. It's just I just don't. I take it to the Father. I just take it to Him. We got to pray. We have to pray. And I'm not talking about no, oh God. I mean, I'm for real like pray. We have to war. That is our weapon. That is our weapon. Praise and prayer. Praise and prayer. Praise and prayer. You got to use it. You got to use it. I don't care how you feel. Some days I don't feel like doing nothing. I don't feel like going, uh, but I have to press in. I have to press in. Press in. Press and pray. Because, pfft, Times are awful. They are awful. 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 Mm. God hears our prayers. A lot, of, a lot of us just aren't praying. We're posting, but we're not praying. Take it to the Father. I just wanted to encourage you all today. I hope I said something to encourage you all. I am just, like I said, I'm just so grateful that um, for me, I know only I know where I've been. Only I know where God has brought me from and the things he's delivered me from. And when I just think about my life and how good God is and how he kept me, he kept me over and over and over again. He kept me from getting AIDS. He kept me from getting all these diseases. God is a keeper. Even when I didn't know no better, he just was keeping me y'all. He just was keeping me when I was in my mess. So I don't care. I'm a prayer. God like I'm stupid and I would never stop talking about him and what he has done for me until he take me from this earth because once you realize once you realize and you get it be like wow wow you did that for me because you love me he could have let me die in my sin God could have let me die in my sin he could have and he would have been justified. <laughs> Give God a yes before it's too late. 
because there is a such thing as being too late. I heard somebody saying that they're going to be able to repent after they die. And I'm like, mm, nope, that's not what the word of God say. But the Bible said, let he who has an ear, let him hear. Everybody can't hear. It's a reason why they can't hear either. So I even thank God for allowing me to be able to hear because everybody can't hear. Everybody can't hear. Do you realize how blessed we are just to be able to hear God pulling at us saying, come to me, come to me. Now is the time. Everybody can't hear him. Everybody can't hear. Everybody can't even feel his tugging. Oh, we are blessed. If you hear him respond. You don't know how many chances you're going to get. You don't know how many you don't know how many times you're going to get it. The Bible says the day you hear my voice, harden not your heart. What are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? We got to love God more than we love sin. We got to get to that place. He is so far much more worthy. There is no sin that should top God. There is just not. God, I hate Satan. I hate him. I hate him. He's ruining marriages with these little slutty spirits coming through these men and women. He's doing so much evil. He's just evil. He's taking our young people out. He got this suicide spirit going rampant. People that, oh, it just makes you angry. Because I know where the source is coming from. He is the source. He said, I come to steal, kill, and destroy. And he show keeping up to his word. He's doing exactly that. He's doing exactly that. So we, we, if we have Christ, greater is he who is in us than he that is in the world. That's why I said, saying you will not, you will not, you will not. He is under my feet in Jesus name. He has no place here because I kicked him out of my life. He has no place. But we open doors for him all the time. If you marry, stop talking to that man. Stop talking to that woman. You shouldn't be telling nobody. I don't know why I'm talking about this. But stop telling that person who is of the opposite sex about your business. Don't do it. It's a doorway. And it's going to lead to something else. Close it right now. Shut it down. Shut it all the way down. Shut it all the way down. Shut it all the way down. Mm, shut it down. So. So that's it, y'all. I'm just. Y'all, I'm going to just keep living for Jesus. <laughs> I'm going to keep living for the Lord. I hope that y'all will just be encouraged today. Just know you have the mm -hmm. Lord with you. He is on your side. He is for you, not against you. He is for you, not against you. But we have to get in his word and we have to do things God's way. Amen. <laughs> All right, y'all. Hi, Keisha. <laughs> All right, y'all. That's it. I don't have anything else for you. So I'm just going to continue on with my day. I just wanted to hop on and share that with you all. So you all be blessed. Be blessed. Be blessed. Mm.